Center right now update. We've all sat back and watched the Steelers drama play out like a bad relationship. And while there are some who will tell you they're fine, nothing's wrong, it's just time to move on. Others have reached the reconciliation point. There was a lot of things were said earlier in the year, um, but, but that's kind of in the past now. We've moved on. It's, he's been a teammate of ours and a, a really good football player, so I hope he comes in and can help us. Um, you know, right now we can... We could take some help. I have not talked to Le'Veon, and I really have no Le'Veon update. Uh, like I've said repeatedly, uh, it's, it's the best approach for us to stay focused on the guys that are here working and, and cross that bridge when we come to it. Uh, nothing's changed from my perspective in that regard. Two sides to every story. Back to first take. Gary, thank you. It's no secret this Steelers season has not been what they hope for, both on and off the field. It's also no secret how Stephen A. feels about the steel curtain or lack thereof. Well, Pittsburgh defensive end Cameron Hayward had this to say about his squad's current situation on defense. I'm not big for speeches. I look for guys to step up. The kitchen is hot right now, and everyone is looking to get out. So we have to get to work and settle it down. Either buy in or don't get on the field. Hayward said he's not focused on the Le'Veon Bell situation and said the Steelers need to believe on defense. Look who's here joining the convo. Damien Woody in the house. Morning, morning. Good to see morning. you. Stephen A., talk to me. I'm very alarmed by what I'm hearing. And the reason why I'm alarmed by what I'm hearing, I just thought it was a matter of skill or lack thereof. I just look at guys like Artie Burns and Joe Hayden. I love my man Joe Hayden. I always see him at the Cleveland Cavaliers game. I won't see him there this year because LeBron's gone. But I've always seen him at the Cleveland Cavaliers game. All right. Uh, uh, but, but seeing him and, 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 and Terrell Edmonds, Sean Davis, and all of these guys, I just thought it was a horrid secondary to me. Uh, miscommunication. Guys being open, and then not only that, it's just me. I don't know if this is true or not. Just by the mind's eye, Damon, Damien, they just look short. They look, they look it always looks like the receivers towering over them. You know, just let me throw it up there. They'll get it with these defenders. That's how it always looks to me when I look at the Steelers secondary. But the reason why I'm alarmed because now from Hayward, what we're hearing is guys are not on the same page. Guys are not coming to work. They're not grabbing their lunch pail and putting it in. Guys are thinking about themselves instead of the team. So it's just added fodder to the dysfunctionality that we have been lamenting about the Steelers. I think you're reading it wrong. Since the damn season began. I think you're reading it wrong. Go First ahead. of all, they look short to you because the secondary play is small. <laughs> so, of course, they look short. You know what? They do they look small, small, though, Max. But no, they do look short. <laughs> they really, right. really do. They but look short. They, they, they can, really you're do. You're saying they could use Richard Sherman? Yeah, back? man. I think they did somebody with some height. Somebody. No doubt. So, but, but here, Everybody looks 5'9". Here's what I think Hayward's actually saying. And it actually relates. I don't think it's so much about what you think it's about. I okay. think he's basically saying, look. The game plan needs to be that we trust our defensive players, even the second, even the players in the secondary who seem to not be able to make plays. So what does he mean by that? Why did the Steelers' defense look so bad? Because they weren't bringing pressure. Not only were they not bringing pressure, they were only bringing three. They were dropping eight back into coverage to try to make up for it, right? And what he's saying is, look, you got Everyone has a job to do. I, I, this is how I read it. You got to trust them to do their job. We got. We can't just bring three and drop eight into co into, into coverage because we think that uh, they need the extra help. We got to actually do it. Play defense. I heard Let me do my job. I heard nothing about scheme, that's, Matt. No, but I that's heard, how I... I heard personnel. When I read between the lines, that's how I interpret it. Okay. They can't... Listen, let me tell you something. I am seriously giving a lot of consideration to uh, taking Matt Ryan in Daily Fantasy this mm. upcoming week because of precisely that issue, right? Like, oh, you're going to play a good offense? You're not going to bring pressure against the quarterback? Great. Let me take that guy. You wouldn't be, you wouldn't be wrong, but listen... I always say anytime you have players start talking or player meetings, boy, that's that's when it's, it's really – it, It's a bad that's sign. Leaking to because us. a lot of times in these player meetings, meetings or when players start talking, nothing gets accomplished. Mm -hmm. Nothing gets straightened out. It's, it, it's but, usually like things start snowballing more the but same. Hayward, but Hayward yeah. usually doesn't speak. He's very, he's, he doesn't say much. The fact that he is the one that felt the need to speak out really scares me. But that's, but that's, to me, that's what alarmed me. Like, I understand, like, he rarely speaks. But when players usually speak, or when you, when you hear about these players-only meetings, those things tend don't they, they tend to not go well overall. For you ain't the, having it because you're doing well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, that's just really the case here. But also, 
Mike Tomlin is a defensive mind. He's a defensive coach. It seems like every year we don't really talk about the offensive side of football because usually they've been proficient in, in scoring a bunch of points. But it just seems like on the defensive side of football, every year we kind of get That's around and talk point. about they, they, we always talk about whether we, last year when they played the Patriots and they couldn't stop Gronk for like one critical drive. It just seems like they don't have any adjustments when teams are exploiting them. That's what good coaches do is you make adjustments, particularly in the game, to kind of show up. Is he talking think, about Tomlin? He's a defensive minded. He's a defensive minded coach. So Hayward's talking about Tomlin. No, I don't listen. I think Hayward. No, I think Hayward is is talking about the players. He's basically calling out other players on the defense. Like guys, we got to man up here because we he's get also we're out there getting people in or out. Like be here or don't be here. It basically, seems like a lot of people don't even want to play there anymore. But my 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 biggest thing is when are we going to see the adjustments on on the Steelers' defense? Okay, you can't like you you can't yeah, yeah. change you can't change the players at this point. The players are who they are. Well, at some points you gotta you gotta make adjustments, tweak things to try to solve what's going on with the, the Steelers, Steelers defense. To, to me, when I don't see the Steelers blitzing, which always befuddles me, when I don't see them blitzing and trying to apply pressure to the quarterback, obviously their mentality is we're willing to bend a lot without breaking because we're scared to death of giving up the big play. My attitude is the hell with it. Put a hat on somebody, make them pay, make them scared to death that you're gonna lay some wood on them. That's to me. That's that's another thing. That's one thing. Bostic and, and, and T.J. Watt, relatively the same player. That's a problem for me as well. You obviously miss Ryan Shazier a great, great deal. The secondary, again, notorious for being inept over the last four or five years. We have looked at the Steelers' secondary, and we have not been overly impressed. Okay? I remember when I just – I was I was so upset. I, I thought I'd never forgive Ike Taylor for giving up that damn touchdown to, to, to Tim Tebow years ago when Tim Tebow connected with Demarius Thomas. I mean, I collapsed on my living room floor, and I almost cried. I almost cried. I did, that's the one I did not want to come into work the next day to deal with. That stuff. It was just torture. It was just, it was just torture, right? But then I, I'm thinking I'm mad at Ike Taylor. Do you have any idea what I'd give to have Ike Taylor now? What I'd give to have Ike Taylor now? I mean, when I look at the Steelers <laughs> secondary over the last three, four years, I am just. It's just deplorable. And so if you can't defend against the best, everybody looks like Tom Brady going against but here, them. Here, but here's the problem: the Ben but don't break philosophy, which is how teams. <laughs> In the modern NFL actually succeed on the highest level. Usually it's a great offense we see get toward the end in the playoffs uh, with a bend but don't break defense. Witness the New England Patriots. There's only one Bill Belichick. And everyone else, you need a requisite level of talent on the team. Mm -hmm. You know why the Falcons aren't good right now? Two key defensive players aren't playing. Don't underestimate Shazir. You, you spend a middle of the first round draft pick on a defensive player, and then he's not there. Not so easy to replace that. Yeah, and they were missing a starting safety. Joe Hayden missed a game. So they had a couple injuries with that secondary. But I know that doesn't explain years of the same problem years. over and over. The Steelers allowing 29 points per game in the third most yards in the league as of now. we got to get to another team that's dealing with some drama. Stephen A., all your people. Aaron Rodgers and the Packers may have shut out the Bills, but it wasn't their prettiest offensive output. Rodgers hasn't been himself this season, ranking in the middle of the pack in most of the major statistical categories. Here's Aaron and Mike McCarthy on that offense. We were championship defensive level and uh, non-playoff team offensive level today. That was uh, not great uh, by any stretch of the imagination. We need to find ways to get it our playmakers and are in position to get some more opportunities. Like anything, you know, our philosophy will never change as, as long as I'm standing up here and it's about on offense, it's about making the quarterback successful. So um, Aaron's given a lot of responsibility and, and rightfully so. He's he, he's earned that, you know, at the line of scrimmage during the preparation process. So, I, you know, that, that, that will continue just as it as it's been for quite some time. Max, these issues on offense, big deal, not a big deal? It's a big deal, and the reason this is happening now, and the quarterback's pointing at the coach, and the coach is pointing at the quarterback, and by the way, on the quarterback side, I'm on Aaron Rodgers' side here, is you saw those stats. He's middle of the pack, but actually low average. 32 teams, if you're averaging high teams, almost like he's between 19 and 20 overall, if you if you yep. average those stats, his position. In you know, QBR, he's 19. Right, yep. not QBR. Good, that's yep. the best Behind shorthand. Trubisky, behind Flacco, behind Bortles. That's a low average NFL starter, mm -hmm. right? 10 to 20 is average-ish. Low average. What happens to the Packers when Aaron Rodgers is average or low average? They got nothing. 
They got nothing. In other words, the whole team is dependent on him being the best football player who ever lived. And when he's not the best football player who ever lived, they're in big trouble. Well, is that on the quarterback? No. Well, they paid him all that money. Lots of quarterbacks get paid all that money. And it's not, they're not the only thing that the team has, which is basically the case with Aaron Rodgers. So the GM and the coach, if the quarterback's pointing at them, he's not wrong. Well, the quarterback is pointing at them, which is why I loved it. Because the bottom line, first of all, Aaron Rodgers is good for this, at least twice a year. At least twice a year, he says something to remind you, damn it, upstairs, I ain't getting much help. He does it all the time, yeah. except this time, you know what I'm saying, he got his money before he was wondering whether he was going to get his money, even though we all knew he deserved his money. In the end, 63% completion percentage, seven touchdowns, just one interception, a quarterback rating of 97. You look at Aaron Rodgers right now, and you're just saying, damn, he's got limited help. But then again, there are some requisite weapons on the squad. Geronimo Allison is there, Devontae Adams is there. Obviously, Randall Cobb is there. And these are guys that have been around for a long time. You know, age, attrition might be kicking in. He's not 100% healthy, and we all know that. But for me, when he called them out, it's reminding everybody. We don't have what we need. In this particular instance, he's looking at McCarthy as well. Because McCarthy's been around. Let me tell you something. He does have a Super Bowl championship. He is to be respected. They went to eight straight playoff appearances before they missed the playoffs last year. So it's not like McCarthy doesn't know what he's doing. But here's the flip side to it. We got to twist these questions around from time to time and ask it in this light. If I have a quarterback, the talent of Aaron Rodgers is one Super Bowl appearance and one Super Bowl title enough for the length of time that McCarthy has been coaching. My answer would be hell no. And so when Aaron Rodgers say what he says, it reminds me that I continue. To, I need to continue to look at the coach and the GM and the president, football operations, before I look at Aaron Rodgers. Sometimes I, when I hear Aaron Rodgers talk like that, sometimes I wonder, do they get together during the week of preparation and, like, build game plans together? Because I know, like, in New England, like, like, Tom and Bill would get together and just talk about things that you like and don't like. And when you hear, when you hear Aaron Rodgers say that, it's almost like Mike McCarthy is just building a game plan. It's like, okay, here, Aaron, go out there and play. And then to me, when you're the caliber of Aaron Rodgers, you would think like, okay, both these guys should be, you know, during the week making preparations together. Aaron, what do you like to do? What concepts do you, what concepts work best for you so we can make sure we put together a game plan that you will feel most comfortable with? Because we keep having the same conversation or we keep hearing the same back and forth between Aaron Rodgers and Mike McCarthy. It's like, well, we're, we're, not, we're not featuring this guy. And, and, you know, Mike McCarthy come back and say, our system is what it is. And it's like, dude, you have the best quarterback in the National Football League. Damn it, get together and make a game plan you think so y'all both can be on the same, play, you, same page. Do you think the subtext is, because you hear like rumblings, that McCarthy's basically saying, look, if you don't try to be so spectacular all the time and just run the game plan, we'll do better. And Aaron Rodgers is freelancing a little bit, and that's what McCarthy is talking about? Well, I think sometimes, I think I will say sometimes it feels like Aaron Rodgers plays out of structure a little bit too much. And, and that's because he, he's so good. He's so good. You know, all, all the spectacular plays we see from Aaron Rodgers, those plays where he's making out, going outside the pocket, but also those plays where we've seen him get hurt, whether it's, you know, his shoulder, you know, shoulder, but, knees, those type of things. But when you say what you say, I think it's very, very profound because if there is a lack of communication, I'm not blaming the quarterback. He's there to work. So, in other words, you don't tell me that the coach wants to meet with them and the coach wants to game plan with him and he's not receptive to that. You're the quarterback. You're damn sure going to be receptive to what the coach wants you to do because, obviously, the coach can get in your way of nothing else. And it piggybacks me off. Max, you'll appreciate this as well. We had I remember when I was doing NBA shoot-around years ago, okay? We had a producer who still works at ESPN, outstanding producer named Mike McQuaid, okay? One of the things that Wait. he taught me, McQuaid's a man, no question. One of the things that he taught me, and, and I've carried it wherever I've gone when it comes to bosses. When a boss sits down with you, they're going to make the final decision. But when they sit down with you and they're communicating with you, okay, and you two reach an accord, then it's your responsibility to execute that game plan and stick to it. Now, if you don't talk with one another, you can't do that. If you do talk to one another and deviate from that plan, you're the one at fault. But if you talk 
and you and the boss agrees. And then all of a sudden you go out there and you execute what the boss asked you to execute. Then excuse me, then it's not on you. It's on the boss, which is where it's supposed to be. You know, that and so me that's, that's supposed to be. Dave Roberts, our boss, he's the same exact way. That's very, very important. That stuff matters. And you don't hear enough about that in football. It reminds me of um, Mike D'Antoni. Right. Mike D'Antoni, in just the right situation, can be a great coach. Right. But where he has failed, and people have pointed to the unwilling kind of star players, uh, Carmelo Anthony in New York, Kobe Bryant in L.A., mm -hmm. where he's failed, the attitude's sort of been, it seems, from D'Antoni, what can I do? The, the main guy ain't going to listen to me. That's what can ridiculous. I do? But the point about, of a great coach like Phil Jackson in his prime that gets overlooked with Phil is, okay, this, this way in isn't working. I have to figure out a way. The coach's responsibility to get these guys, to have these concepts land in their brains. But what Kobe, How am I going to do that? But what Kobe used to tell me was that they used to have those conversations. And right. as a result... It was never incumbent upon him to deviate from that because whether it was plan A, B, or C, what happened is he and the boss had talked. And when the boss is sitting down with you, he's not sitting down with you so, as a boss. Y'all are so working together. What and we're then he's saying you to is execute. they don't have the greatest relationship, McCarthy and Rogers, and he's he's audibling a lot. That's, that's what it's saying. It just seems like, like, so. like during the, like during the week is when you need to be together yeah. to formulate these things. Too, like many too many times too many times we see in post game presses. Mm -hmm. where Aaron Rodgers is calling out Mike McCarthy. Mike yep. McCarthy is calling out Aaron Rodgers. Who do you blame like, between the two? Who's more to blame, if that's the question? I say McCarthy's more to blame. Oh, McCarthy. McCarthy. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. Because my point is, based off of your question, yeah. Damien, what it says to me is you got a quarterback that might not believe as much in his coach yep. as he should. When Aaron and Rodgers, I'm just, why, and that's I'm just what guessing. Do, yeah, I don't that's know. What he has to do I don't cover the team. Well, I'm just I mean, guessing. And just go back to go back to what you said. Guess. You know, go back to what you said initially. I think most Green Bay Packer fans would agree. Like a guy as talented as Aaron Rodgers, we're wasting his talent. Yeah, we're wasting him. We got to go. You know, you're not wasting those cufflinks. Mm. See though, all about the details. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's all for you today. You, you peep it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah you peep the it out. Well, you got a time. Yeah, but you, you, you peep it out. Yeah, no, yeah. You As know the I'm newest Christian. rocket you know is to do. Thank you, you know. for okay. looking at Max. Better, Will better. anyone be the missing piece Four. to a Houston title? That's next. First take. Such a good time in sports.